So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with my long overdue Festival of the Arts and Flower and Garden Festival haul. video especially when it's a Disney haul video so I've collected all of the items that I purchased for both the Festival of the Arts and Flower and Garden and I have them here for you today so let's go ahead and get started so I think we should start with the Festival of the Arts since that happened in January and February of 2017 I went late in the event I think it was the next to last weekend that the festival was happening so I will say that the merch was a little picked over by the time I got there but I was able to get the pass holder shirt and I think I was one of the last people to get this because they were almost sold out of everything that wasn't a, like an extra 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 large or I think they had smalls left. But this was the pass holder shirt for 2017 which was the inaugural <laughs> event. I will say however it is not the softest material. I wish it was a little softer. It does have this right there which is pretty much the whole reason why I bought it. it has pass holder and it has figment with a little paintbrush which I just loved how much figment there was in this festival so I had to get it it is a little on the large side however not like the flower and garden festival shirt which we'll come back to and continuing along with the figment to love they had this mug that had figment has the logo has inaugural on the bottom again but what really sold me on this mug was the back with the treble clef. So for those of you who don't know, I was a band nerd for the majority of my life. I play piano, clarinet, bass clarinet, trumpet, and bass guitar. So I play a lot of instruments, I love music, and I love that this festival was a combination of art and music and food. It was just, love this new addition to Epcot. I think it's a great way to celebrate the arts and I loved this. And just the color scheme. I love the whole color scheme this year. My newest favorite souvenir to get from the parks are the Turvis Cups because I actually use these on a daily basis. Especially the larger size, but they did not have the larger size for the festival. However, I love this bright purple top. So again, it's the same logo. It does not have the treble clef on this one. I just had to look. But it has the paintbrushes. I have been using this one already. It's part of my daily just routine. I pick up a Tarvis and that's what I drink all of my beverages out of. So these are my new favorite souvenir because they actually get used constantly. Everything. Purple is my favorite color. I just loved all of the artwork for this event. So those items I actually purchased through the Disney Parks app online because I wasn't sure if I was going to get to go to the festival. So I ordered those ahead of time. Once I got to the park, I was hoping to be able to buy some of the pins, but they were sold out of everything by the time I got there. I did just remember something we were given as a souvenir while we were there, and I'm gonna find my footage of it because I don't know where I ended up putting those stickers, but we got a strip of figment stickers from the Festival of the Arts, and I have mine saved somewhere. I just could not tell you where that is at this moment. And the other thing was while we were there, we did the figment scavenger hunt, which I will put a link to our video of doing that up here. But it was kind of like the extravaganza scavenger hunt that they do where you went through the countries and figment was in artwork that was hidden within the countries. It was adorable. Some were really hard to find, some were really easy. We did learn a trick, which and cover your ears if you don't want spoilers for next year's event, we'll probably do the same thing but most of the paintings were around the Kidcot area. So once we figured that out, <laughs> we just kept looking for Kidcot. I will say that wasn't true for all of them. In fact, the one in Norway had us really stumped. We, <laughs> we were searching for a while for the one in Norway, but overall, very fun. And at the end, once you turned in your map, which is another souvenir I have, and at the end, you got to pick your figment artwork magnet. So I'll zoom in for you in a separate clip so you can see Figment. I chose Figment as the scream, which coincidentally was the one in Norway that we could not find. <laughs> so that works out well, but this was adorable. It, it even has Figment on the frame and the artwork did as well. 
I just thought this was an adorable idea that they added for this festival and it just gave an excuse to explore the countries as usual and it added to the day for sure. Okay, so telling that story made me remember that I still have it now. And I found some other souvenirs in there that I've forgotten about, so. Oh, and there's the figment sticker. Ta-da! <laughs> so that's where that was. It was with the map. So here is the completed map from the figment scavenger hunt. You went through and these are the different paintings that you could see. And it was just really fun to explore and you got a sticker pack and you put the stickers on where the paintings belong. Just like the other scavenger hunts they do, but very fun. I also saved a map because I always save maps from these events. And then just like the other festivals these days with the food, you had a passport. It has pictures of the food in here somewhere. There weren't stamps or stickers like the Food and Wine Festival, but still it was nice to be able to decide what food you wanted to try by looking through, and I love having these little things as souvenir. One of my other favorite things from this festival was they had a wall that was a paint by numbers interactive. So you got to come up, it was totally free, and they gave you a little pot of paint and it had a number on it and they told you a certain number of squares that you were allowed to paint. When I was there, it was the end of the festival, so they let us paint seven squares. I know some people on the more popular weekends were only allowed to paint three. We got to do seven. We were there early on Saturday, so the painting had just gotten started. But by the end of the weekend, you could see the finished painting. And just to let you know what you were painting on your way out exiting the experience, they gave you a postcard of what you painted while you were there. Again, totally free for this and there's not much that's free at Disney these days. So when they do little things like this, I really appreciate it. So loved this, love that I have the postcard of the artwork that we painted and just think that this was the cutest idea. So the last item I have from the festival has seen better days, but I still have it. And it's my little chocolate easel. <laughs> um, it has the sticker on the back, the Festival Art sticker. It is a little broken. It, it got broken on the way home, but it was still adorable. And I guess I should probably eat this now, considering this is from February. It probably doesn't taste as good as it would have in February, but it's chocolate. It doesn't go bad, right? And if you were wondering, it was $6.99 in order to do the scavenger hunt. So the scavenger hunt isn't free, but you get the magnet as your souvenir for it. So you're basically paying $6.99 for an adorable figment magnet. To me, totally worth it. All right, so now we're moving right along. We're gonna move to the Flower and Garden Festival now. This is another one where I wasn't sure if I was going to get to go. So I went ahead and ordered the items that I desperately wanted online, and it was quite the fiasco. <laughs> if you watch my weekly vlogs, you know that somehow or another, the Disney Parks app, even though I ordered these items and got them shipped to my house and saved my address, and even though I double-checked my address to make sure it was my Texas address, Somehow, between hitting save and send, it reverted back to my Sarasota address. So my items got sent to Sarasota. One of them, the magic band, got delivered directly to the door of my old apartment. So, so either the person that lives in my old apartment has a free magic band or they returned it to the front office and the front office had no idea what to do with it. Maybe they eventually shipped it back to Disney, I don't know. But I talked to Disney customer service and they quickly sent me a replacement for the magic band, which was awesome. Didn't have to do anything for it. They just sent me a replacement. And the other items, it was marked as non-deliverable by the postal service. So it got sent back to Disney. Disney knew that I was waiting for it. So then they just changed the address and sent it back to me. So it took a while, but I did finally get all of my things and customer service was really good about it. So no complaints there, aside from just the weirdness of somehow my address reverting back. So I have my Flower and Garden Limited Edition Magic Band, and I almost love the box just as much as I love the Magic Band, which is why it's still in here. I didn't end up even wearing it when I went to the festival because I was too worried about messing it up because it's just so cute. So you open it up, it's a limited edition of 2,500. And it has Mickey and Figment with the monorail. And I just thought this was adorable. I loved the artwork. I know some people didn't like it this year. I loved it, um, which is funny because I'm not that thrilled about the food and wine art this year, but other people love it. So just, you know, everyone has their personal tastes, but this right here, 
right up my alley. <laughs> the next item I purchased online was this flower and garden spinner keychain. And I've actually been carrying this around on my keys ever since, so it is not in pristine condition anymore, but it has pigment and it has many, and it's just, I thought it was really cute. And it wasn't expensive, and it has this little other little tag that has the flower and garden festival on it. So I just thought it was a cute way to have something Disney on my keychain without being overtly Disney. I also purchased this flower and garden magnet, because again, I love the artwork this past year. It's very, 60s to me and if you know me you know i am obsessed with 60s i already liked the 50s and 60s and then Mad Men happened and then i became obsessed so the 60s is my happy time and that's why i love cabana bay because it all just fits so this artwork reminds me very much of that time period and so i love and plus it also has figment and spaceship earth which are two of my two favorite things about epcot so it was an insta buy speaking of which this is not an official disney item however I saw these and I had to get them. So these ears are by We've Got Ears and that's who makes most of my ears. I just love her style. I love that she makes her own fabric. So I buy a lot of her ears. I don't, I'm not a huge ear wearer. I typically buy them with the best intentions of wearing them and then the day comes to go to the park and I'm like, oh, but I'd rather just not have to carry those around all day. So <laughs> I end up leaving them behind in the hotel room more often than not. But I want to be a headband wearer. I think they're adorable. And I was good and actually wore these this year. So these are obviously Figment Spaceship Earth Flower and Garden specific ears from We've Got Ears. So I will link her shop down below, but you probably already know about her. So as I said before, I am obsessed with the Turvis cups right now. So I had to get the Flower and Garden Turvis. This probably is my favorite turvis that I have, and I loved last year's Flower and Garden turvis, but this one is even better. I love the light pink top. I'm not even a pink fan, but I just like the fact that it's a different color than black or any of the other colors I have. And the details on this one, I just love a mini. It's so cute. And of course, the whole reason why I had to buy it was this little figment. I am obsessed with this little figment. I love the way they drew him this past year. I just think it's adorable. So that is probably one of my favorite services. I use this a lot. Remember earlier when I mentioned that the Festival of the Arts shirt was a little big, but nothing like the Flower and Garden shirt? Well, we've come to the time to show you the Flower and Garden shirt. Or should I say dress? Because this thing just keeps going and going and going and going. Ah, it is insane. The fit, not so bad. The length, I have no idea what happened. I do not know what happened to this, <laughs> this cut of shirt. It comes down to my knees. It really does. It covers my shorts. It is a dress on me. And I'm very sad because I absolutely love, love the design on the shirt. Obviously, I have not worn it <laughs> because it's so big. So. My mom says that she will attempt to hem it for me, so I think eventually I will have it hemmed. But it's the annual pass holder shirt. I bought it instantly when it went online because I knew I needed it. I just, here, let me show you. Let me scoot back here. Like, you can't, I can't even get far enough back to show you. It covers my shorts. It's too long. It's way too long. This is not okay. This is not how shirts are supposed to fit. For reference, that is the Festival of the Arts shirt on me. You can see all of my shorts. This is how a t-shirt is supposed to work. This one is a gown. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what happened. I have no idea what brand are these. They're both made by Hanes. I have no idea what happened. It's so soft. I love the texture of it and I'm very picky when it comes to textures of shirts. That one will always be a mystery. I have no idea who in manufacturing decided that a long shirt needed to fit a 6'5 male and no one in between. But I think that brings us to our last item for this haul and this is the only item that I actually purchased in the parks as far as flower and garden and that is my very first Alex and Ani which is the Spaceship Earth Alex and Ani. Obviously this is not flower and garden specific but I did buy it on Memorial Day during my flower and garden trip. 
I will say once again, I did look at the merchandise while I was at the Flower and Garden Festival and they were pretty much sold out of everything again. I was there the very last weekend this time, so they were out of the pens, the pens were gone, nowhere to be seen. And they did have some of the shirts left, but they weren't on sale or anything yet. And I thought, you know, for the last weekend, I don't really want to pay full price. I already have this shirt and none of the other ones were, I was just dying to have them. So I did resist on purchasing anything else while I was there. It did help that I'd just been to Megacon, so I spent a bunch of money at Megacon and uh, walked away with just this. So if by any chance you're wondering about the shirt that I'm actually wearing today, which is this one, it's just from Target. So if you like this shirt, it's from Target. Target always has the cutest stuff, so that's where that came from. So that's gonna wrap up this Disney haul, and it's also going to wrap up my Disney footage for 2017, which I can hardly believe that, but that is the truth. Um, however, do not fret. We are going back to Florida in September, mostly for Halloween Horror Nights, but we are also going to do Disney and food and wine and hopefully see Avatar Land. So do not fret, because there will be more Disney footage coming out in 2018. However, Halloween Horror Nights is my favorite event of the year. So my channel is just going to veer into Halloween Horror Nights territory through the month of October. I've also got some fun Halloween things planned for October. And then not too long after that, it will be Vlogmas. So I won't start sharing my September trip until 2018. However, if you follow me on social media, if you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, any of those, Snapchat, I've got Snapchat, <laughs> follow me on any of those, you'll be able to see some of our trip ahead of time because I will definitely be doing some live stuff while we're there. And of course, I still have the weekly vlogs posted every Monday, so if you're not into Halloween Horror Nights, do not fret, there will just be a normal weekly vlog on the Mondays to tide you over and uh, hopefully you enjoy watching us and our pups and maybe Colby because I don't know if Colby's leaving us. <laughs> There's always a little Disney mixed in with that. So that said, next week I will be posting my first Halloween Horror Nights video of the season. I'm very excited. I know some of you are too. So I will see you guys then. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure to click the red button down below. Unlike things at Disney, it is 100% free. If you are already subscribed, thank you. I love you. Thank you for sticking with me and watching my content all the time. Leave me a comment down below and we'll have a little chat. And uh, I think that's going to wrap things up. I will see you guys again very soon.